why yes i believe we shall oh i got a live one here <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for joining me today on the crazy train. So off we go uh, for another hour of good geeky fun. Um, Got an interesting topic today that I think is interesting in its own right and will also uh, testify to the current uh, massive renaissance and interest in RPGs and tabletop role-playing games. And I'll uh, get into that just here in a moment. Uh, First, I want to mention this. If you're listening on uh, July 14th at 1 p.m. Central, this is live talk radio. So if you're listening on 101.1 FM, The Answer in the Little Rock Central Arkansas area or online uh, via an app or the 101.1 FM, The Answer.com website, website then you know the stream there glad to have you You can call in during the live show at 501-823-0965 or you can tweet me at shane plays that's s-h-a-n-e-p-l-a-y-s again that's 501-823-0965 or you can uh, tweet me at shane plays and if you definitely want to get your comment or question in during the live show call in Uh, but i do try to monitor the the twitter uh, I do sometimes after the show see that I've missed a tweet because I'm juggling a lot of stuff during the show. So anyway, five one eight two three zero nine six five or Shane plays S H A N E P L A O I S. Waiting eagerly in the wings uh, is one of my guests. I, I don't. We may have another guest joining us. Uh, I've I've reached out to them again and said, hey, you know, ask them if still joining us. But we've definitely got Carrie Wood, who is an assistant editor. Uh, with Gemstone Publishing that does the Overstreet Price Guides. And her and her co-author uh, are the have just released, and this is so exciting to me, the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games by Carrie Wood and Richard Ankley. I hope I'm saying that right. Carrie, welcome to Shame Plays. Hey, how's it going? Good. So glad you joined us. I know we, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you kind of... Uh, you know, working with me to get you on. I know that your your schedule's been crazy, so uh, so glad to have you on. I, I'm really excited about this this book that you and Richard have written and gotten out there. So, um, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, here's what I do normally. Uh, um, you know, I like to introduce my guest. We'll you know chat a little bit. I've got some show notes and and some other news items, and then we will dig completely into the main topic, which is Overstreet and your new book. Uh, and I'm an Overstreet reader from way back. I can remember, <laughs> I can remember in the '80s, sitting at Shoney's late at night uh, with with uh, my mom and stepdad, and they're sitting there talking and drinking their coffee, and I am reading the uh, Overstreet Prize Guide and just pouring through it and absorbing because it always had a couple of articles in it. You know, and then it would have nothing but pricing, and I love looking at all the covers and everything. So, I'm a fan from way back. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, and to see this, you know, to see how Overstreet's expanded out. Uh, I've also one of my sponsors uh, and friends, Michael Tierney from Collector's Edition Comics. Here, I, I know he's a contributor to the Overstreet Price Guide in some fashion. So, um, I, don't, I don't, I'm not. I think he contributes like a yearly column or analysis or yeah, something like he, that. Yeah, he's probably one of one of our many. Uh, extremely valuable Overstreet advisors who yeah. uh, helps us, you know, con- continue to put this book out. Uh, I mean, the the 48th edition of the Overstreet comic book price guide is hitting stores um, this this coming week. So be sure to keep, yep. keep an eye out for that as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I always love it's exciting to see what you choose for the cover and you know, um, and all that. We you have know. some really cool covers. This yeah. Year. <laughs> like, I feel like we always like. I don't. I don't think there's ever been an Overstreet cover that's been a dud. Um, but God, I mean, we've got Ethan Van Skyver doing our main cover this year with Flash and Green Lantern. We've oh, got, nice. Yeah. Uh, the uh, 50th anniversary uh, Planet of the Apes cover. We've nice. got Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It's it's super cool. It's a great lineup. You can't go wrong. Yeah. And, and Ethan has that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you're aware. He has that Cyber Frog 
crowdfunding campaign going on right now for his yeah. personal comic book. So maybe in the future, now I know he did Cyber Frog years ago, but maybe his new Cyber Frog will end up in the Price Guide before too long. So <laughs> that's really neat. Uh, so tell us a little bit. How long have you been with? Uh, well, it's actually Gemstone Publishing, but how long have you been with the whole the whole rigmarole there? Sure. So uh, I've been, uh, I'm basically, I'm coming up on my fourth anniversary with Gemstone Publishing, which is, you know, the, the home of the Overstreet brand basically is, is Gemstone. And uh, the Guide to Tabletop is the third book that I have sort of outright authored. Um, the other two books that I've done are the Overstreet Guide to Cosplay and the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Video Games. Uh, and I've also contributed to a lot of other books uh, in our what we refer to as our how-to line, which is sort of everything that's not the price guide, um, is what we call our how-to line. Okay. So uh, I've contributed to the guide to uh, horror collectibles. That's recent. That came out about this time last year. And uh, later this year, we've got the Overstreet. Uh, it's actually a price guide. It's the Overstreet Price Guide to Star Wars collectibles. I see that. Yeah, the same. Uh, just so you know, uh, so here's how this radio show came to be this particular episode on free comic book day i rolled up into my um you know friendly local comic book store uh of course you know i definitely support uh, collector's edition and uh the comic book store here in little rock is sponsors there's also kapow comics and others um but there was this as part of free comic book day 2018 i always try to get the what i call the unusual or unexpected stuff when i go to free comic book day right i I don't i don't necessarily want like the marvel and dc and all that although i'll grab it if i can but i like to get the stuff that's like oh what the heck is that uh which i think is the point of free comic book day like expose people to new stuff uh or get people back into a comic book store and there was the overstreet guide to collecting yep and and it has this great cover that's sort of a valiant (laughs) three stooges mashup yeah (laughs) yeah so it's it's certainly an unusual cover yeah. with the three stooges uh dressed as uh some valiant characters yeah. i know bloodshot was one of them yeah well there's bloodshot and then there's um oh not ah darn it it's the guy exo man of war yeah and then larry i can't i don't know who larry is i'm not i'm not versed enough in the valiant arts but he's got He's got bubble gum or candy or something going all the way up his arm, like in a bandolier, and he's holding a banana. So I don't know <laughs> if that's Ninjack or I'm not. I'm not sure who that is. Um, so anyway, I, I like it. I, I love the cover. Um, it's very great. But in here, uh, there's there's a nice little introduction to collecting comics and other stuff st- told in comic book form. And then in the back, there's this introduction, and there's a, a very good grading definition guide in here. Um, really in-depth guide to grading comics and then uh there's like you know at the end there's hey also know about this and it mentions the tabletop games and the star wars thing and i was super intrigued by the tabletop games because i'm a big tabletop and rpg gamer but it's also like i said you know i I keep saying on the show that we're in a major renaissance right now and the very fact yeah the very fact that this guide is coming out i think is a testament to that so i wanted to you know uh, and I, when I go to game stores, conventions, whatever, uh, I'm spending just as much time these days looking for old games as I am old comic books, although I love both, you know, so right. I, I get the thrill of both, you know, um, and anyway, so I'll tell you what, let's, uh, we're about to, I, I got to do some show notes and, and some stuff and we will, and, and some news we will circle back to the, uh, tabletop, uh, guide from from overstreet i did send out another email to uh your partner in crime there uh does he go by richard or rick uh i i would say most of his friends call him just rick <laughs> rick okay so just rick i sent out a i said hey man you know if, if he can make it love to have him if not you know we'll have a good time but uh he's welcome you know i, I did send him an email and say hey you're welcome to call in anytime in the, in the next hour so uh but that you know i know with with it being live radio that sometimes comes stuff comes up for guests so right yeah i'll just pretend to be him does this sound anything like him <laughs> hey carrie i'm really glad to be here does that <laughs> sound anything like rick than he is <laughs> <laughs> carrie i really loved writing this book <laughs> shane Long time listener, first time caller. Okay, I'll stop right. doing I'll stop doing that to poor Rick. <laughs> so it, it's all in jest, Rick. Okay, so um, let me. I got to go through some show notes here, and then we'll, like I said, we'll circle back and feel free, Carrie, uh, to uh, 
you're welcome to comment on any of this. So, okay. uh, yeah, I like my guests to participate in the show. So, okay, this is uh, first and foremost, Shane Plays Geek Talk is live talk radio, but it also goes out of the podcast and in other venues because I love all. The, I think that might be Rick calling in right there. I've got a, I got, we got a call coming in. So, um, but um, the show notes for last week's show and all previous shows are up at shameplays.com. That's S H A N E P L A Y S dot com. Uh, and last week's show uh, is is on the blog in another place, and that was a tribute to Steve Ditko, uh, who is is a, a really hard to overstate his influence on on modern mainstream comics and his influence on on Marvel. And yes, we do have uh, Richard Ankley, aka Rick, on the line. Hey, do you want to go by Richard or Rick on the air, there, buddy? I uh, I'll take Rick. Rick. Okay, so Rick, welcome. Uh, we got. Uh, I was. I was talking with Carrie, and she gave me a little bit of her history with uh, uh, Overstreet and all that. Do you want to maybe give? give and, and I'm about to do some show notes and some news items, and then we're going to circle back to talking about your book, The Overstreet Guide on uh, Tabletop Games. Uh, but you know, and, and feel free to comment on that. But do you want to give maybe a quick, uh, you know, how you got involved with Overstreet and your involvement with his book and whatnot? Sure. So uh, both Carrie and I work, you know, in, relatively in the same company, um, but I do the media stuff for uh, Diamond Comic Distributors and Alliance Game Distributors under the guise of Comic Wow, Previews World, and Game Trade Media. And my first passion is always and has always been uh, tabletop gaming, RPGs, board games, and card games. And uh, Carrie and I were in the same our office. At, we're in the same building. We did, you know, and we kind of just hung out and stuff, and I decided, uh, let's pitch this idea to Carrie's boss of doing an overstreet guide to collecting tabletop games, and uh, the rest is history. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Well, we're going we're gonna to go in deeper. Probably after the first break, we'll really dig in uh, on that, but uh, definitely glad to have you on the show, tickled to have both of you, and I, you know, I was telling uh, Carrie that... I went to new comic book or free comic book day and I picked up the, uh, the guide to collecting from Overstreet as part of free comic book day, which I think is very cool. And then I saw the ad for uh, the Overstreet guide to collecting tabletop games. And I was like, I've, I really want to talk to the authors because I, I, you know, one, this interests me personally, like when I go to cons and game stores and whatnot, I'm always looking through the, you know, the used inventory and, and uh, you know, Oh, I can't believe I found this and look at this condition. Uh, but also I, I think it's a testament, uh, to, to how much of a renaissance we're in right now, you know, with, with RPGs and yeah, board games. So it's, it's very exciting, but, uh, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump back into some, uh, show notes. And like I told Carrie, uh, during the show notes, the news items, whatever, uh, you're both welcome to participate in that. So, uh, even before we get back to the main topic. So, um, but like I said, yeah, last week's show is on the blog. That's Steve Ditko at shameplays.com. Uh, this, this show does go out as a podcast because I love both mediums, live radio and podcast. Uh, and it goes out on the blog at shameplays.com, iTunes, Google play music, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, YouTube and more. I think I'm on Podbean now. I didn't even know that they're just picking up the RSS feed, which is fine with me. And then last, but never, ever least shame plays is also carried on Krypton radio. Krypton radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi, KryptonRadio.com. And uh, the show always rebroadcasts the following Saturday and Monday. So a week from now, uh, this will go out again. So, And then I also put up the show on YouTube, just the audio. And depending on the subject and uh, the guests or whatever, you know, some people will just jump all over that. Um, so it just depends. Um, anyway, a couple other local items here. Um, this also speaks to the the renaissance we're in on D and everything else uh, as i mentioned a couple of shows ago at the movie tavern here in little rock every tuesday in july so you've still got the 17th 24th and 31st the movie tavern is having D D adventure so uh, dms will host from seven to nine uh, it's bring your own dice and a healthy thirst there'll be signature drinks 
which is the Nat 20 for and and then those for, for those of age there's the Nat 21. Uh, the dice may fail you, but this drink won't. All participants must be 18 plus and will have the opportunity to win their grand prize for the MVP. Which is, I don't know what the grand prize is, but I'm pretty sure since it's the movie tatter, tavern, it's dinner and a movie. That would be my guess. If you don't, the the movie tavern is sort of like a. Uh, Alamo, Alamo Draft House kind of thing. It's fairly new here in Little Rock. So, um, yeah, and so they're having D&D there on Tuesday nights. All players are invited to come early to create a character or can choose from pre-made selections. And that is a PSA. That's not a paid ad. A friend of mine uh, who used to be in my D&D group and now works there asked me to uh, promote it. And I said, you betcha, because I like to help the geek scene in Arkansas. Um, also, I want to give a shout out to friend of the show. And uh, he's been on the show very of several times great guy uh you know guy i met at work becoming great friends with him richard mcbain um the man himself uh who you might also know he used to organize the troll cons with troll lord games around here for castles and crusades folks anyway happy birthday richard if you're listening to this live or on podcast so i'm, I'm definitely glad you're in my geeky world also, show uh, show pl- uh, show, pl- uh, show sponsor Game Goblins. Check this guy. It's Carrie and Rick, tell me what you think about this. The local game store is having summer day camp D and D for young adults. So oh, I love that idea. Isn't that great? Yeah. So this summer, and I think it's each week through a certain, probably up until a week or two before school starts. Game Goblins is hosting day camps for children and young adults ages ten plus. At our day camps, our quote-unquote camp counselors will lead kids in a half day of gaming, learning, and fun. Each session runs Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So, and it it sounds like it kind of starts over each week. So you participate like in a weekly basis. I'm not sure. So anyway, contact, uh, I think it's 224-GAME or look for Game Goblins or 501-224-GAME or look for Game Goblins on uh, Facebook and, and find out more. Make sure to tell them Shane Play sent you. So I'm not going to read anything for RP, Arkansas RPG Con this week because we have an ad now from Carl Hill. So we'll uh, learn more about that here in a second. Now, guys, I got to tell you, the head of my news team, Sal, he wears a he wears a fedora and chomps a cigar and everything. If I <laughs> if I don't banter with my engineer Zach, his grandmother and her dog Muffin get really upset with me. Oh, so no. yeah, it's terrible. So I've got a banter with Zach, but I enjoy bantering with Zach. So Zach, how are you this week, buddy? I'm doing good. All right, thanks as always for making the show happen behind the scenes. So you said that you did make it to the Incredibles two last week. I did, and you liked it. Yes, I did. You see, you told me before the show you liked it more than the first one. I did because I saw the first one now about two or three times. Have you? I lo- the the first Incredibles is my favorite Pixar. Okay, and I I thought that um I thought they did an amazing job with Incredibles two. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think this story, you know, with the fam, the entire family thing, yeah. I think it's just, I don't know, I liked it more than the first one. Dude, what about Jack Jack and that raccoon? I don't want to get too deep oh. into spoilers. But that raccoon was gangster. I felt kind of sad for the raccoon until he kept coming back for more. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Carrie and Rick, have y'all seen Incredibles two by chance yet? Yeah, I did. I I would say Jack Jack versus the raccoon is yeah. is, is probably my action <laughs> sequence of the year. Of the, um. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's no, pretty it's, crazy. It's good. Yeah. I don't know that that I would say I like it more than the first one. I like it as much as the first one. Right. Um and I the thing is it it picks up right where the first one left off. So right. you need the context of the first one in order for this to be as good as it is. Yeah, it literally literally takes up like the you know, and I didn't see that coming, but I thought it was neat storytelling. Yeah, I don't know if I liked it more, but I liked it maybe equally as well or or parts of it. Uh, I was talking to Zach. There's a scene. I'm trying not to be too spoilery uh, where Elastigirl is fighting the villain in this room that has all these video patterns going on behind them. And that's one of mm-hmm. the most interesting sequences I've seen in any movie ever, whether it's, you know, animated or, or live action. And I think that's the scene where they had to start giving the seizure warnings. The seizure warnings. Yeah, yeah. I was I was curious because I remember I, I heard all those news stories about that going into the movie and I was like, I don't know what it is. Um, I think the, cause I didn't see it the week it came out. I saw it maybe 10 days after the fact. Um, right. So maybe, maybe it had been toned down by that point. Mm. Cause I know Disney said they were going to like release a new version to theaters that didn't, oh, okay. didn't have it as severe. So, okay. Well, I mean the, the version I saw and we didn't get out till a couple of weeks later was pretty, pretty intense still. Yeah. So yeah. 
All right. Well, uh, and now the other thing here, Zach, uh, is, you know, there's two Joker movies coming out now. Did you see this from not, DC? I didn't know there was there's two. two. Okay, so we're going to get the Jared Leto meth head Joker, um, right? Which I was actually talking yesterday. I kind of like that Joker. I just don't like him as the main Joker, I right? He's interesting as like a alternate universe Joker, mm -hmm. right? But now, and I never can say this person's name. So Rick, Kerry, Zach, help me. Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix? I would say Joaquin. Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. He's going to play a different, unconnected Joker movie where it's the origin of the Joker, how he becomes the Joker. Oh. So, yeah. Here's, here's my concern with this. Yeah. Is that by doing that, DC is competing with itself now. <laughs> right. Is that, you know, you... I. <laughs> I don't I'm not entirely opposed to the idea of a solo Joker movie as like an idea. Right. I think it's a fine idea. I think there's a lot of interesting lore you can pull from in order to make a compelling storyline with that character. Right. But why are you going to have Joaquin Phoenix be one Joker and have Jared, Jared Leto, Leto. Mm -hmm. re reprise the role from a film that let's face it Suicide Squad not a good movie. Mm -hmm. Um and I think Leto's performance as the Joker was really polarizing. Mm -hmm. It was, I'd say, because it was such a I different think, take. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think you're going to have a lot of people look at these two movies, and you're going to have that immediate reaction of, "Well, this doesn't look as good as that one," and I like this Joker better. And like, why? <laughs> like, why are you you're shooting yourself in the foot when you do something like okay. that? Right. Yeah, I think that. I mean, I think it's possible that somebody. I'm trying to remember. I was talking with somebody yesterday. And they basically said they feel like that DC's just spitballing right now. See what you know. Let's just get anything out there and see what people latch on to. Uh, they're very. They're definitely becoming unfocused. You know, as we like, what what is DC doing right now? You know, they. I do think that they made a good step forward with Justice League. I'm not saying it was the most amazing movie ever, but it was a good step forward. And I'm looking forward to Aquaman. But you know, I don't know what's going. My, my I'm take. See a trailer for Aquaman before I can form any solid opinion on it. Well, I'm going off of, I, in my opinion, one of the highlights of the Justice League movie was I did like, to my surprise, heavy metal Aquaman. So uh, <laughs> you know, so we'll see. But my take on the Joaquin Phoenix one, where they're telling the origin, I think the Joker works better when you don't know where he came from and you don't know what he's. What he's about, he's just this chaos agent that shows up on the scene. Like in The Dark Knight, the Heath Ledger Joker, you didn't know. I mean, they even said, like, we his coat, clothes are all custom. You didn't know where he came from. And to me, that makes the Joker more interesting. So, but but anyway, okay, moving on. Uh, hopefully, we won't get a nasty gram from Sal's grandmother and her dog, Muffin, because we, we did make a, a valiant attempt to... Um, to banter with Zach, and that's a little bit of a play on worlds or words for the cover of the Overstreet Guide to Collecting from Free Comic Book Day. <laughs> I'm going to get us to a break. I had some news items that were RPG related. They're not essential to the show. I think I'm going to go ahead and jettison those to give more time to Carrie and Rick. But uh, I'll just give the headlines. Uh, so play play the news sound just so we can play the news sound. Gosh darn it! There we go. There's that news team working hard on a Saturday. Uh, so the three news items, you can go search and find them on your own, or I'll have them on the show notes when the podcast version of the show goes out. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons has possibly teased Eberron as an upcoming 5th edition campaign setting, which will make a lot of people happy. There's a lot of hardcore Eberron fans out there, and I definitely want to see D&D 5th edition focus on some non-Forgotten Realms stuff. The Witcher tabletop role-playing game will be released soon, uh, and that will be a... RPG based on the Witcher novels, not the Witcher computer games, because the rights are different. And then finally, the Star Wars, the role-playing game 30th anniversary edition is out, where you get like a slipcase with uh, auth like evidently authentic reproductions of the source book and the main role-playing game from West End Games in the 80s, also known as the, uh, the D6 star wars role-playing game so any any comments on any of those three super quick news stories there carrie or rick yeah i'm uh, i'm actually really excited to get a copy of the west end reprint me too uh, i was a huge fan of the d6 system 
Yep. Uh, I've still got all the, the original source books. I'm actually looking at them at my shelf right now. Uh, nice. So I'm yeah, pretty excited, especially with it coming in a swept case and just being mm-hmm. a nice presentation piece for for the you know collectible aspect. Yeah, I'm excited for it. How about how about you, Carrie? Anything on any of those three items uh, there? The the idea of doing a, a a tabletop RPG set in the Witcher universe is pretty interesting. I'm not super familiar with the novels. Uh, my husband is a big fan of the video games, though. Um, I think it's something that it makes a lot of sense. You know, high yep. fantasy is always a, a good setting. And even though it's not based on the video games, you're going to have that built-in audience from the sure. popularity of the game series. So sure. I think I think that's a guaranteed home run. Well, the core the core elements are there. You're a witcher, which means you're a monster hunter for hire, basically, that goes around and fights monsters. You go, the village has been decimated and the witcher shows up and they're like, save us. And he's like, how much money do you have? And, you know, from, <laughs> right. but, but anyway, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get us. Like yeah, go ahead, Rick. <laughs> I like that guy. Tell yeah. me more. I like that guy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get us to a break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the Overstreet Guide to Collecting, or not the Overstreet Guide to Collecting, the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, which includes RPGs uh, with authors or co-authors, Carrie Wood and Rick. He goes by Richard Ankley on the cover of the book, but it's Rick Ankley. And we'll also have, uh, throughout the show, we'll have updates on some of these comic book crowdfundings, including Red Rooster and Space Force. So when we come back, right here on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Whether you are crawling through dark dungeons of the 1970s or exploring fantastic modern narratives, Arkansas RPG Con has a game for you. Arkansas RPG Con is a convention for all kinds of tabletop role-playing games. We'll have old school Dungeons and Dragons, new school Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Starfinder, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Fiasco, Traveler, and Arkansas's own Castles and Crusades, and many other games. Games will be running all day on August 11th at the Maumel Event Center in North Little Rock. Go to ARPGCon.com for all the details. Arkansas RPG Con is brought to you by Shane Plays Radio, World of Game Design, and Theater Elf. We'll see you on August 11th at Arkansas RPG Con. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today from the mind of author and comic book industry expert michael tierney it's not just a comic book it's a comic book novel the wild stars is sci-fi and so much more learn the explanations behind ufos and space gods this isn't the twilight zone this is the region of the milky way galaxy known as the wild stars we guarantee you've never read anything like it the complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk a journey 
into the things we love. We're talking today with Carrie Wood and Rick Ankley. Am I saying Ankley right, Rick? Yeah, Ankney. It's Ankney. It's Ankney. Okay. My apologies, sir. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah, my pay- Rick. It's been a lifelong curse. Okay, Rick, Rick, as long as they put it right on the paychecks, right? Okay, Rick Ankney, uh, about the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, which is exciting to me because, one, I love Overstreet and I have for decades. It's a great resource for collecting resources and price guides, and, and it's, they, don't just, they don't just phone it in. I mean, they really try to get the best possible information out there uh, by working with multiple uh, people across, you know, I, I guess internationally, even Carrie, right? Or, or Rick? I mean, yeah, it's, I yeah. mean, as as much as possible. Um, the uh, we've got Overstreet advisors on the price guide from from all over the world. So, right, okay, yeah. So, the, I mean, it's it's a good resource. The reputation is very good, uh, and now they're coming out with this one on tabletop games, which I'm really exciting to uh, talk, or really excited to talk about one because, like I said, I I like to collect. Uh, used games and retro games and classic games, but uh, it also shows the, you know, the uh, the power, the renaissance of of games and and tabletop games and RPGs, uh, which gives lie to the the take I've always I've always disagreed with that video games and TV will replace everything. No, there's there's room for everything, uh, you know, because no nobody's exactly alike. And I love video games and tabletop games and TV and all that. So anyway. Uh, we're about to dig into that. I did want to real quick give a um, shout out to we're going to give a crowdfunding update on the Red Rooster Golden Age comic book with uh, Mitch uh, Brightweiser and Betty Brightweiser and Mark Pellegrini. So go ahead and give us that that Red Rooster announcement sound there, Zach. <laughs> My fellow comics lovers, ask not what your rooster can do for you. Ask what you can do for your rooster. Look at me when I'm talking, son. Okay, so if you don't know, Red Rooster, the concept is uh, they're doing it on Indiegogo. Uh, Mitch Brightweiser and Betty Brightweiser and Mark are their, their comic book pros. Uh, Mitch, if you don't know, is the guy that redesigned Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's the design they use in the movies. His uh, wife is is currently coloring Wee Leaks on or Lee Weeks on Batman. I mean, you know, these these are big names, uh, and they're currently at eighty three thousand dollars raised which is 554 percent of their goal and there's still 22 days left so go get in on this the red rooster golden age there's stuff in here you can only get uh you know through the indiegogo and like i said it's batman in a barn but they're playing it straight it's not satire it's not you know looney tunes or anything like that so go check it out okay so tabletop uh, overstreet guide to collecting tabletop games now uh, Carrie and Rick, I'll let either one of y'all answer this so you figure it out. Why do I want this book? I, in fact, let me put it this way. One of you answer it this way, and then, and then one of you answer the other way. Why do I want this book if I know nothing about, if I'm not even really into tabletop games or RPGs, and why do I want it if I am? Is that fair? Yeah, oh, I think absolutely. that's fair. Okay. Great one. All right. So yeah. what, you what take you whichever one you want. Carrie, which one All do you right, want? I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I'll say if if you um, if you don't really have that much of an interest in like hardcore tabletop games, um, and I would consider like tabletop RPGs and and war gaming and whatnot like hardcore tabletop games. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like board gaming is something that everyone does growing up. You know, even if you're not into um, like RPGs or, or war games or, or anything like that. Everyone sort of grew up playing Scrabble and Monopoly and the Game of Life and Candyland and Trouble and just sort of it's 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 such a shared human experience. Board gaming is and and I think um, you know we we sort of intro the book with these classic board games and you're still going to learn a lot about those games even if you played them growing up. Um, and that, that will sort of ease you into learning more about sort of everything else. And then the articles on everything else, so the D&D articles, the Pathfinder, the Magic the Gathering, the Warhammer articles, all of that stuff, will explain to you why these things are so popular and why certain things are valued as collectibles within those games. Yeah, okay. that's good. Yeah, that is good. Okay. 
Is there anything and, else? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, I would I would agree with that. Like she said, uh, everybody and I, almost everybody, everybody that I know that you talk about the tabletop of board games, they do have that reminiscent. Yeah, we used to go to my grandparents on Sunday and we would play Monopoly, or like Carrie said, the Game of Life or Stratego or all these classic games from the 70s and 80s. And uh, I feel like, if anything, they might even just get that spark of nostalgia and also be like, well, yeah, we did this. And, oh, my God, I didn't realize this history behind each of these games that I enjoyed as a child. And, and maybe it will spark an interest in going out and finding those or going and asking grandma and grandpa or mom and dad, hey, do you still have that game in the attic that we used to play as kids? I'd like to show that to my kids or, and, get, and, and just pass that on. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. So, uh, I mean, I guess what we're saying is in, in our culture, everybody's probably a, 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 a tabletop gamer on some level because they're Absolutely. like, everybody's got those tabletop games in their closet or, you know, and I, and I kind of see it in two different phases. I see, I see board games now, not, not RPGs and whatnot, but I see board games in American culture anyway, as pre Catan and post Catan, uh, you know, there's. I a, think that's fair. Yeah, there's a there's a a flavor and a feel and a and in some many cases a complexity or a play style to board games and and families that used to like family, you know, like the Norman Rockwell families that I know. I'm expecting them to bust out Monopoly and they're busting out Catan, you know, and yeah. they think it's something they've kind of found, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, they brought, I guess, what, in the 90s, late 90s, mid 90s, Mayfair Games mm -hmm. brought Catan over and that kicked off a, a European invasion, I guess, if you will, of, of, uh, of games coming in America and then which has kickstarted, not kickstarter by the website, but kickstarted, you know, a whole new type of game design and interesting game design mm -hmm. from Americans, Europeans, whatever. So um, what, what do you what do you to feel are i mean do you do you think that monopoly has been dethroned or is it still you know like the big one or what what, what trends are you seeing out there oh that's a great question i would say um monopoly in the hardcore gaming world as we all would i guess we kind of say the, the the individual that go to the conventions like gen con and origins and um packs unplugged and stuff like that Monopoly to them, if you say that you're going to show somebody Monopoly, I feel they're going to just be like, there's so much more. Right. And, and, and that Monopoly has not been dethroned. It's, I think it's been put on a, on a pedestal of this was then. Mm -hmm. And okay. this is now. And Catan, it's still Catan or Ticket to Ride. Those are your gateway games. Yeah, I should have mentioned Ticket to Ride. We, we introduced that to a family a couple of months ago, and they went out and bought it the very next day. So, yeah, Ticket to Ride's a lot of fun. So, what, yeah, what about you, Carrie? What's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I would say that um, the landscape of what we would consider, like, classic board games is is very different today than it was when I was growing up. Um, the The board games that I played as a kid were like my mom's copies of stuff of of the game of life and and monopoly and whatnot and if you pick up the book the photos of those those games in there are the ones that right. um that i grew up with which was kind of neat to be able to do but um yeah you know i i think i think there's still a place for the sort of classic you know american style mm -hmm. board games um i i think we have found that there can be just this beautiful coexistence between the likes of, you know, a more competitive last man standing game like Monopoly or um, Game of Life or whatnot, um, compared to the the European style of Catan or more recently Ticket to Ride. Yeah, Ticket to Ride. If people don't know, I would have a hard if people wanted to be introduced to a new style. Like, I would actually have a hard time choosing between Catan and Ticket to Ride. I, I guess I would say if you have a, a wider range of ages, I might recommend right. Ticket to Ride. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, but. I, I would say Ticket to Ride is slightly easier for people who have like literally never played a, a Euro style 
board game before just because Catan, much as I think Catan is sort of like the baseline for Euro games, Mm -hmm. um, there's still all that resource management and whatnot that you sort of have to keep track of. And I think that's what turns a lot of people off to European style games is Mm -hmm. that there there ends up being just a lot to keep track of sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you that the trade off for that complexity is I love the, for want of a better word, the AI that's built into them. Uh, like oh, yeah. the artificial oh, sure. intelligence, like the the AI that's in, for example, is it Pandemic? Uh, you know, there's some really, oh, really yeah. good, really good AI or in Zombie Side or, mm-hmm. or some of that stuff. But what I like, and this actually surprises me because I'm not I'm not super competitive when it comes to like sports or things. But when it comes to like games or whatever, I get pretty competitive. Like I want Boardwalk, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm like I want the yeah. lot of cash. I like uh, I like a lot of the cooperative nature of the newer board games, uh, where you can, sometimes you're working together, or even the AI is sophisticated enough the the rules of the game that you can play it by yourself, and you know that's that's something that that is 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 refreshing to me. And I also like this genre. It's the paranoid games where one or two people are that are playing the game you know are against you, but you don't know which ones. Those are a lot of fun too. Oh yeah. I'll tell you right now, I think a really good uh, game that has a great a- uh, AI that also is uh, um, a great introductory game to all ages is a game by a company called USAopoly, and it's called Thanos Rising. Huh, okay. It, it's very thematic. It's, it, it's the Infinity War mm-hmm. uh, theme. It's got all the heroes from the movie, and Thanos is your villain, and all the bad guys are from the movie. But I'll tell you what, the mechanic is, is amazing. We played it three times last night at a board game uh, party I went to. Oh, fun! And everybody that played it put it w- went to uh, their um, board game geek and put it on their wish list. Nice. Uh, probably gonna get and it's it called there. Thanos Rising. Thanos Rising. Yeah, let me. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna email myself about that right now. My email is my <laughs> to do list. I will never get to inbox zero. So, um, all right. So. Um, uh, I'm going to actually bring things back real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah. No, I'm go ahead, yeah. Athlete. Another reason I feel that it hasn't been dethroned is because so many different IPs mm-hmm. see a Monopoly game. Right. Rick and Morty Monopoly, sure. Bill and Ted Monopoly, uh, uh, the Mario Kart Monopoly. There's so many Monopoly reskins. That it, it, it tells you that it hasn't been dethroned. But it's definitely they, they're remarketing it to oh yeah different audiences, so it's still a candy. Yeah, they've tried it over the years. I know they've introduced like a credit card mechanic, and they've introduced mm-hmm. like an app with it and that sort of thing. But so, would you you know from from your research, and this is a question for both of you. I mean, so so like Milton Bradley and like Hasbro, and Hasbro is much bigger than its board games division. But like when I go to Target or Walmart or whatever, and I see that aisle of games. So, like, Milton Bradley and Hasbro, they're not in danger of being knocked out anytime soon, would you say? Well, of course, Hasbro bought out Milton Bradley. Oh, you did know, they? Hasbro, I didn't even Hasbro know that. Owns, okay. Um, Hasbro owns Milton Bradley. Hasbro owns Avalon Hill. Hasbro owns Parker Brothers. Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast. I didn't even know. Yeah, they bought Wizards yeah. of the Coast. They, yeah, wow. They're, uh, so I didn't realize they were that big. Chances are, you know, if, if you're in... Um, if you're in a big box store like a Target or a Walmart and you're going down the board game aisle, basically everything there is probably uh, a Hasbro published title in one way or another at this point. Now, is this Whether or not that's okay. a, a good thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not know. trying yeah. to, to touch the politics of that right now. But at the very least, you're still getting a lot of really high quality titles, um, you know, being saturated in, in a mass market sort of fashion. OK, so. Uh... So let me rephrase the question. Uh, the brands, yeah. you know, Milton Bradley, Parker Brothers, do, do those still have a really strong cachet? Or do you think they could phase those brands out and still keep the games going? To my knowledge, um, the brands have already been phased out within the last wow. decade. Yeah. Um, I, I yeah. think everything except for Avalon Hill is... Wow. Is, um, is basically it's it's all Hasbro games. Now. Oh, interesting. I see. Um, now so, is this? Uh, oh, go ahead. Wizards of the Avalon Hill under the Hasbro umbrella. Yes, the rest of them have just been rebranded Hasbro games, but Wizards of the Coast and Avalon Hill still maintain their their logo, their 
identity within the industry. Okay. And it's literally between uh, at the big box stores, it's Hasbro Games and Asmo Day uh, uh, affiliated games. Like, well, Asmo Day just days. sold too, didn't they? No, they put themselves kind of out on the market, but that, okay. they do that every all the time. Because I, me- I remember Asmo Day bought Mayfair, which hurt me inside because I'm a big DC universe role playing game guy and i was like well they, ah. but they did mayfair or mayfair did them in the Catan. and but anyway all right <laughs> so let me ask i have to ask this one quick because i'm wanting to get us to a break and then get back and, and and ask a couple other questions what spectrum of games can i find in the overstreet guide to collecting table i mean am i going to find magic the gathering am i going to find yeah. monopoly am i going to find yeah. like what what is uh, let me let me ask it this way what did you not consider a tabletop game to go in here uh, that's interesting. I mean, we, we looked at, um, we sort of divided the book between, um, classic board games, uh, tabletop RPGs, war gaming, and collectible card games. Um, so there's, and, and within those, we hit sort of like the, the big games with, with each of them. So when it comes to classic board games, you're going to see Game of Life, Monopoly, Catan, Ticket to Ride, uh, with the tabletop RPGs. Obviously, the big one is Dungeons & Dragons, but we also talk about uh, Pathfinder, and we look at a number of other games. Uh, with minis, there's Warhammer, there's Hero Clicks, and with uh, collectible card games, <laughs> there's Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh!, and then there's everything else. Uh, yeah. While we have sort of spotlight articles on the big games, we also have sort of market report style articles on sort of like here's some other things that you know maybe we couldn't dedicate a thousand word article to but something worth paying attention to nice for sure so how many pages is this is it is this as thick as like a overstreet price guide for comics or like what oh god no thank god i would still be (laughs) writing it um so i'm sure we could do a book that large um it's it's 224 pages i believe now is it is it digest size or is it like magazine sized or it's a digest size okay all right okay nice all right well i want to i want to get us to a break and get back and then i want to go into like the the not the types of games but the types of content that we may be able to find in the, in this book, the Overstreet Guide to Collected Tabletop Games, which is out now, right? It's, it has yes, a, we yeah. debuted it at Origins last month, so it is on store shelves right now. Nice. Okay, well, I'm going to get to a break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we'll learn more about uh, what's in the table, what's in this tabletop Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games, and we're going to learn a little bit about uh, Black Hops USA GI Buns of the Patriots, the new uh, comic book out from. Uh, Mark Pellegrini and Tim Lim over at uh, at uh, Antarctic Press. But first, got a little love for a sponsor. Mentioned earlier about Game Goblins uh, Day Camps, D&D for experienced young adults. Folks, some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Uh, I hardly recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. First-time customers, mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into things we love. Just want to mention, uh, you probably heard that Castles and Crusades ad. I will be running Castles and Crusades on August 11th at Arkansas RPG Con. And one thing that Carl, I don't think, mentioned in his ad that we played earlier in the show, there's going to be a classic traveler game going on well as lo- as well as an all-day newer version of traveler so that's a lot of fun okay folks we're talking with carrie wood and richard ankney rick ankney uh from overstreet guide to collecting tabletop games uh we'll get back to that here in a second first i want to give an update uh on a couple of comic books one uh chuck dixon and timothy Lim. Uh, and uh, I think Dave Dorman are crowdfunding Trump's Space Force. So a Space Force in space. It's going to be huge. Uh, and that's it's on Indiegogo right now. There's a month left, and they have 21, 000, almost 22,000, which is uh, 140% of their goal after just a couple of days. And then Black Hops, USA GI, Buns of the Patriots is out now. And uh, this is a PSA. This is something I did for free. This is not an ad, just to help out my friends, Timothy Lim and Mark Pellegrini, who are friends of the show and local comic book creators. Play that audio trailer I did there, uh, Zach. 
In a complicated world, he makes things simple. Bun to kill, hopping to our defense. When carrot and stick diplomacy fell, they send in Black Hops, USA, GI, Buns of the Patriots. Featuring the first weaponized all-American bunny in the history of comics. <laughs> and the RPG, the rabbit propelled grenade from Antarctic Press. The writing talents of Mark Pellegrini, the artistic talents of Timothy Lim and Brian Denham, and cover art by Dave Dorman. Get your copy today, today. at fine comic book stores everywhere. Don't let that cute little nose fool you. He's adorably effective. I'm scared, Sarge. We all are, son. I'm just glad he's out there. Okay, I apologize for any psych mental damage. I should have had people sign whoever. Zach's in there dying laughing. So, folks, you can get, uh, that's nationwide comic book stores, order it from Antarctic Press. That's Black Hops, USA GI, which is a play on Usagi Yojimbo or Usagi the Samurai stuff. Uh, Buns of the Patriots. Issue one's out, and issue two will be out in a couple of weeks. So, okay, uh, we have, what, about five minutes left, Zach? Okay, so I want to pack in as much here as I can. What, Carrie uh, and and Rick, what can I find in the Overstreet? Not the types of games. What kind of – is this – is there any pricing information in here, or is this just more how to find stuff in the different versions and how to spot which edition of something? Like what? Yeah, it's it's more like you know, here's why these things are collectible, and you know why why when talking about let's let's take Catan for example. Why is there an edition of Catan that's like a five hundred dollar game when you find it on eBay when you can otherwise walk into any store on the planet and buy the game for thirty five dollars? And it's you know technically yeah, it's the same game, but you know what are the differences? Uh, with certain editions that make certain editions that much more valued as collectibles. Um, the other stuff that we cover in the book, we talk about the impact that crowdfunding has had on the industry. Uh, we talk about preservation and storage techniques, uh, just because even if you're not a hardcore collector, you probably want to make sure that your things are looking as nice as possible for as long as possible. Uh, and we also have a lot of really cool collector interviews as well as industry interviews. We talked with Peter Atkinson. We talked with Matt Mercer. We talked with Larry Elmore, just a, a lot of the top names in the industry. Okay. Yeah. So, so, Rick, let me ask you this. Um, yeah. So does the this new slipcase 30th edition, 30th anniversary edition of the West End game Star Wars being reissued by Fantasy Flight, does that affect the collectability of the original books? You know what, I, I'm, I'm going to say that it does not. If anything, it's going to show that those books had such a huge impact that with this release, people are going to be like, oh, shoot, I bet you I still have these books. They're going to be looking for them mm. to find, and, and others are going to be like, and I much would, uh, maybe I just want to go get the originals. And it, it could actually drive the collectability of that product up. Um, like, if I see a West End Games book, out on out in the wild. Yep. I will. I will oh, I'll snap it, it up if I have the money on me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Or if it's in better condition than what I already have, I will. Yes, it's it, it will immediately become part of my collection. Fantastic. And uh, I feel like anytime they do a reprint, all that's doing is sparking the reinterest in the collector. Right. And I still prefer. I think Star Wars is space opera and should be quick moving. And yep. you know, a lot of the newer systems are good systems, but they, they're too complex for st Star Wars should be a quick moving space opera action, you know, but that, that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah. All right. I mean, so, like, Oh, go ahead. I like the fantasy flight version that, that's out right now. Yeah. Um, the, but having all those different dice that, yeah. you know, all you need is a D six. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think ghostbusters introduced that D six pool and then, uh, and then uh, Star Wars ran with it. Okay, and unfortunately, I've only got about a minute and a half to give you to answer this question. But uh, Carrie and Rick, why, why now for this guide? I mean, has something, has this been something Overstreet's been wanting to do? Or is so, do you see something happening in the hobby right now where you're like, okay, this book's really needed? Well, I mean, obviously, the renaissance that the industry has been experiencing for the last 
five to ten years, within the last decade, um, was was really the driving force. I mean, we did this book because Rick suggested that we should do this book, but I believe Rick suggested that we do this book because it was clearly time for this book to happen. Yeah, well, I definitely want a copy. You know, I I buy stuff from uh, at cons, and the people who selling it don't even know what they have. I've actually told the guy, don't. I'm going to pay you more for that because you don't realize what you have. Uh, Rick, you got like 10 seconds. I got to get to draw and close, but you got 10 or 15 seconds to add to that. Um, yeah, I think that uh, the, the biggest thing about the book being out is uh, everybody has an opportunity to go and see what they like and, you know, uh, pick it up and be drawn back into the folds because it, it, it's not just a renaissance. I think we're actually in the right. golden age of tabletop. I hope so. I got to gotta draw us there. Man, both of you, Carrie and Rick, thank you. Folks, that is the Overstreet Guide to Collecting Tabletop Games out now. Get your local comic shops, game shops, bookstores, Amazon, whatever. I got to draw us with the bad joke of the week. I got 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> and I picked this one out for tabletop games. Why can't rogues learn other languages? Because thieves can't. Because thieves can't. That's right, baby. And I picked this one out for non-gamers or non-D&D gamers. Knock, knock. <laughs> Who's, there? Who's there? Dishes. Dishes who? Dishes the police. Come out with your hands up. Okay. And it's supposed to be bad. It's supposed to be bad. <laughs> Thanks, both of you. I got to draw us to a close. We'll catch everybody next week on Shame Plays. Monopoly's been bringing people together for almost 50 years. That's how long we've been wheeling and dealing together, building hotels together, and going to jail together. Warner the market and utilities. You can't lose. Share a smile and your day seems a whole lot better. Parker Brothers kind of fun. Brings people together. Shame Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual? For as little as $1 an episode, simply go to patreon.com slash shameplays.